first time since 1940, women's hockey teams compete for the New Zealand Championships. Eight teams are present at Melville Park, Auckland, and the tournament is to last for a week. These are the Auckland and Wellington teams, Auckland in white and Wellington black. It's a fine day and the ground is fairly hard, so a fast pace is characteristic of the game. Wellington attacks after the Auckland goal, but the Auckland defence is too good. But Wellington continues to press the attack and scores a goal. It's a very even game, and with a series of rapid movements, Wellington nets still another goal. These two seem to be getting their money's worth anyhow. Towards the end of the first half, Auckland turns on the pace and with some skillful movements, outruns and outwits the Wellington defence, scoring a couple of goals. The second half finds Auckland in the lead. There's a concerted rush by Auckland on the Wellington goal and in a tense moment it seems like a score for the home team, but the Wellington goalie saves magnificently. The visitors come back to the attack and by the end of the game the score stands even at 3-0. This is the Canterbury versus Otago game. On the last two occasions, the tournament was held, Canterbury were the winners. Early in the first half, Canterbury presses Otago hard. But although Canterbury scores two goals, Otago's fine positional play proves a decisive factor. Four times Otago cracks the ball into the Canterbury net. Incidentally, these girls have been playing a 70-minute match every one of the seven days the tournament lasts. Otago emerges as the champions. It's the first time they've won since 1933. It's a great comeback, and it looks as though hockey is an up-and-coming game. Most progressive countries now realize that the health of their children reflects on the health of their adults. Children's health is a nation's health. This Christchurch home that saw many of the social functions of former days now has a community purpose and is one of the many health camps throughout the Dominion. Children come here from as far afield as Timaru and Greymouth for six weeks, or if necessary, longer. They're chosen by school doctors and are sent to recuperate from severe illnesses. All are children who, because of faulty feeding or other causes, need special care and attention. The health department believes that camp should provide good food, fresh air, adequate sleep, some schooling, lots of outdoor activities, and happiness and contentment. With exercise must go relaxation, and all children have a mid-afternoon rest. Children, many from city homes, are also encouraged to appreciate the quietness of the peaceful grounds. They chat with the gardener, go for walks. They are close to nature. They are in the sunshine. It is the best and the least we should give our children. Our community contributions provide these things. Mardi, the station where you caught the train for Babalook and Cairo, the crowds, the flower pot hats, the strange costumes, you were going on leave. Here you hired your first Gary. Cairo, here we come. These are the days you wrote home about, the sights you saw. The things you won't forget. A baker's boy with bread you never bought. A strange cart on the way to the markets where trade was carried on like this. You won't forget the smell. You took time out with monkeys and other things to provide free entertainment.
Not even a busy Friday night in the old hometown ever looked like this. At night, the lights were going out all over the world, except in this street. You could scarcely believe your eyes when you saw English girls as military police, but you soon got used to them and turned to something equally important. You learnt to keep things under your hat. found an outdoor cabaret. Not even an indoor one turned on anything like this back home. You never took a cup of tea from this fellow. There were other strange sights that proved the saying, travel broadens the mind. Is, of course, was one spot where you often lingered. When leave was over, you grabbed another galley for the station and found there were more ways of getting there than sitting on the seat. Of course, the sergeant always paid. That'll be the day. The train back. If you didn't get in the window, you didn't get a seat. That was part of the fun. Part of those days you'll never forget. <laughs> 